worst of all It couldn't be your fault When his life and mine will fall It will always be my call Trying to throw this shade on me Like they all hate on me Don't bring that rage on me Why they throwing shade on me Like they ashamed of me I thought what age are we uh -huh. It's warm outside And we all want to shine Bet you nobody in the city could stay in the crib this time Whoa, got pics on the way like the vacay Shoot photo with the AK Got friends by my side, trying to have a great day And I wonder why they throw shades, yeah But it's all on me, let them roam free Like a European, yeah See me pick up the phone like I'm trying to haul a home Start to act like E.T. Yeah, rock them shades, now they can't see me Trying to run away, but I'm not speedy Need no fake, I just want what's real And I ride that way till I'm free, yeah Trying to throw yeah. this shade on me Like they all hate on me Don't bring that rage on me No rage Evening Good evening, how is one? I'm alright, I'm still not tired of that tune yet I'm still not ready to change it yet <laughs> Let us know what you think of the comments. Just let us know what you think of that intro song, whether it's for you or if it is. It's not very motorhome industry, I don't think. <laughs> I don't care. I like it. <laughs> I like it, please. I like it. I like it. Uh, yeah. Do you like it? Um, you don't. Someone's do on the show today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, evening, everybody. If you want to come on the show, you want to ask questions, you can get me on Twitter. If you just follow me, I will follow you back, Shane. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. You're not full tonight, are you? Oh, no, the no. Caravans and Campers at SY45RP. You can get me on Instagram at the motorhome man and you can email us shane carney yes the motorhome show at gmail.com what's on tonight we've got a couple of guests on tonight haven't we well we've got three so, well sorry yes well no i wouldn't say lee's a guest anymore isn't he is he no no he's just a regular isn't he he is he's, he's part of the, he's very much part of the show bless him yeah yeah it's like when you go to the pub with the guys out at the bar <laughs> <laughs> he's getting Chris Fabi later, isn't he? <laughs> what, and even though you want a quiet pint up but with your mate, he still joins in. Yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> What's on tonight, then, mate? What, 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 okay. what, what's happening? So at 7.20, we've got uh, David from Collapse. Collapse Products, yep, yep. Then yep. Uh, around about 7.40, 7.50, we're going to have uh, Leon. So get your questions, technical questions in, caravans, motorhomes, anything you want to know, and he'll answer them for you. And then we've got a biggie, haven't we? Yes. We've got uh, Dan from the Meet the Trojans. He's been doing this a while, mate, hasn't he? He has, yeah. He's probably yeah. going to teach us a thing or two tonight, I think. I tell it's you, good. he does some cracking videos. Um, very, very knowledgeable on the industry as well, Shane, isn't he? We had a quick chat with him in the week. Um, really, really, really interesting guy, actually. Um, and I've got my work cut out with him tonight, haven't I? He is. He says, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah I think you're he's right. got a worse haircut than mine, but he's got a fair old sense of humour. I mean, yours got better from the other week, didn't it, to be fair? <laughs> he did go downhill for one episode. Oh, oh, I know. Well, that's not my fault, though, is it? <laughs> shall we just before we run away with these? We're getting lost with these comments. Shall we? Uh, whack yep, a few sure. Shout outs out, mate. Okay, Craft Crafty Caravan. Hello, hello. What? Go on, you far away. I'll put them. Click them. You read them. Okay, David Man sixty eight. Hi, hi. Uh, good evening, guys. Volkswagen Adventures with Lisa and Phil. Evening, Phil. Paul Osman, good evening, guys. Jim Page, hi, guys. Guitarist? Who's a guitarist? Jimmy Page, no, that's right. Never mind. Jimmy Page, Leonard Zeppelin? Yeah. <laughs> hey, there we go. Yeah, stairway to heaven. Caravan Onions, evening all. Kobe the Camper, hi, all. Hi, Kobe. Dirty Trucker, regular. Good evening, Jance. Evening, Dirty Trucker. Now, this is where I don't know if I want to show this comment. Good song, Dave. I see, see, see. Good, see. Cool vibes, crafty caravaners. 
Ashley Jacobs, awesome. See? <laughs> Bob Urgeo, thanks, Bob, is a commercial track. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what it means. Oh, they keep coming. What's wrong with this? Good song. Linda, hello there. Good Ross the Finn. Evening, guys, yes. Uh, James DeVos. See what I mean? Music is the biz. Why have we got all your friends on tonight that are just backing everything? I haven't got any friends. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> are we caught up? Where Tell me the tin. Hello, all. Well, yeah, we, we can't get, we won't be able to get through to all of you, but hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us again. Yeah, it's a good point. That's the new ones. If, we, if we can't get through to it, it's not because we, we don't want to. Um, it's obviously we've got to move the show on and everything. How's your week been, Shane? It's been a bit better. We've been a bit busier. Um, we're pretty much doubling up on two pickups a day each, two buys a day, Yeah, uh, which is nice after the week before where we just didn't seem to get near anything. Um, but there's still a big buzz out there, isn't there? Yes, mate. Yeah, I'm running out of stock. Yeah, I think everybody running out, is. Running out of stock. Quite, quite, worrying, quite worryingly, I think, in two aspects. One, because people are running out of stock and they're going to run out of stuff to sell. And two, people have got to start getting, dealers have start, got to start getting these vans out. And that's, that's going to be hard work. That's my problem now. I've got a backlog of vans to get out. Um, and if you get a problem with one van where you've got to fix it, it knocks you back another day and another day for the next vans. And everybody, obviously, because they're all thinking, obviously, it's going to be July the 3rd. Um, everybody wants the vans as soon as they pay the deposit. So the vans that we are bringing in now, Shane, I'm not advertising at the moment. Um, I'm going to wait right. till we've caught up with the backlog, mate, to be honest with you. Um, that it's... Uh, uh, but we can't complain. We can't complain at all, mate. I really can't. No. Now, just a quickie, I, I like to give credit where credit's due, due Shane. A couple of days ago, um, my um, inquiry form, I stopped getting inquiries, basically. Yep. Which is um, good. I, um, this is for people who wanted to sell the motorhome. And I was getting no inquiries for a couple of days, and I thought, oh, that's strange. And it was Friday. Uh, I don't know if I should say, say this. I went to the toilet. And I thought, shall I try my inquiry form out? And it wasn't working. Don't laugh because I get a lot done when I get the tools. I get all the emails done. I get no, I, I'm, yeah, no, I'm laughing because that's probably where 50% of my, my ideas come from. Hey, how productive can you be? <laughs> oh, no. Make the most of your time. So, yeah, as I was saying, now my uh, submission form wasn't working. So, and that and now I'm talking, Shane, I'm talking seven o'clock at night on a Friday yeah. night. So, the company that I use for doing uh, handling all the website and handling everything to do with that is a company called NetBiz and Stoke on Trent. Um, they've been hosting my website and building my web, looking after my websites now for a fair few years. So, I rank up um, the chap who looks after mine, Simon, um, told him what the problem was and check this out mate by half past seven he was working it's good going the, the point Very is the, the point is Shane he didn't have to do that he could have said we can't do anything till Monday or wait till we're in the office wait till we're in the office tomorrow or whatever but that's that little extra bit mate that's yeah. what you pay for isn't it it is, yeah. And you can't not, not that. And credit where credit's due, mate. Simon, NetBiz, within half an hour, my submission form's back online. But it's a lesson learned. I, sh I should be checking me, should be checking the, the different things on the websites more often, to be honest. But just a big, big shout out to them. Um, and just good service, mate. You can't not that. No, no. And that's what you want. And that's what keeps you. Because obviously, there's a lot of companies out there that do a similar sort of thing. And it's very competitive. Yeah. Uh, just good service, mate. Just just good service. Do you want to drop a few more shout-outs, mate? Yes, okay. Uh, the Trudgeon's evening, folks, been some time since I was live. He's watching us, watching you, watching us. No, no, I know. I, th I, I, listened to his, I think you listened to his podcast as well, didn't you? Uh, which I think was from the start of May. I enjoy that. Well, let's talk about that later. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, yeah, okay. Sorry, uh, Shane. That's right. <laughs> upset, yeah, but... <laughs> no, Available bad. today. Hi, guys. Yeah, it's John, isn't it? It is, yeah, yeah. John no, Buxton, yeah. yeah. Hi, John. Lovely guy. Lovely guy. Uh, so many comments coming through. It's brilliant. 
Gary so, Squire, evening chap. Sorry about question before introduction. I've lost that. Yeah, that's one for uh, for Lee later on. So any 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 other questions for Lee? Just get them in. Have you were um, noted that question for him? That I have done. Yes, yeah. I certainly have. Why, why do I question you? I don't know. He's here. He's the man, Gary. Gary, we need to get you on, mate. We really, really do. Evening chaps, love from all at Forefront. Hope you're well, Gary. Stay safe, mate. Um, yeah, yeah. We need to get you on. I've just, I've just had a message from his uh, his co-worker, Jason, today. He was on a few weeks ago. 46, he thinks they've done this month so far, in 14 days. 46. It's good, mate. But... He's got a big operation there. That's a lot of holes to fill, mate, isn't it? A lot of <laughs> it is, yeah. It is, so, it is. Have a few Jason more hours. hours. Jason will be working 24 hours around the clock to replace Oh, them. and I bet Gary will be well on the case. <laughs> <laughs> Linda, hello, Ac Collapse. You, you, See, this is... I know it is, I know, but I just love how there's so many comments between the between <laughs> between the forums. It's a big pub. It's a big it's lovely. Pub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're yeah, like the yeah, jukebox. Yeah. And the problem yeah. is the card switches off. <laughs> it's our jukebox. Stephen uh, Padgy, it's an evening guys. Looking forward to seeing what Dan has to say about the current situation. And and David, Dan and David, obviously, uh, was, which we'll get into a bit. Um, it's all about the shows, really, isn't it? Chaos rains tomorrow, though, Shane, doesn't it? No, it's been it's bright sunshine now. I'm actually very, very warm. It's just started to rain here because my skylights have just closed. So I'm just getting some rain. Right. That's probably the noise you in the background. But as I was saying, chaos rains tomorrow, doesn't it? The high street's open. Oh, I'm with you now. Yeah, I've got a triple to Manchester first thing in the morning, and I know... I'm leaving an extra 20 minutes half an hour just because I think it might be a bit busier. I noticed this week the roads are getting a little bit more busier, mate. We had a trip on Saturday. My God, it was the busiest I've seen it. Yeah. Russ Finn, you're okay. You've got till July. We'll have to work quicker like Lee's doing. Oh, don't big Lee up. What are you picking up yeah. tomorrow, Shane? Uh, what have I got? Uh, I've got something, a Geist Phantom. Guys, yeah. scary motor home that is. Are they French? Uh, oh, that's a good question. Actually, I'm not sure. On guys, that is a good question. They're a bit quirky, aren't they? Sometimes. And I've got another one in the afternoon. I've got an old better car to go and have a look at. Right. We're picking an uh, auto trail up tomorrow, 2019, and I forgot what model it is. You'll know because I've already told you. <laughs> I know. Uh, De was it a Delaware? Or it was a Delaware, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, Delaware, 2019. Um, might even give it Gary. Gary. Yeah. Available today. <laughs> Is this pent-up demand going to fade, Shane? Uh, I think it will. I thought it was going to fade a little bit this last week, but then I think it's going to pick up again, or it's going to boost again start of July when if and when the announcements are made that campsites are back open again, because more and more people will sit there thinking, well, I'm still not going away, so that's my only option. And then when Wales and Scotland announce, which are, um, if I was to guess, I'm not sure, Wales, as we said before, is September the 26th, is what they've got in the diary for opening the campsites. Yeah. I think Scotland being about four weeks behind us. Yeah, yeah. So I think there's going to be like three levels of boom. I think think the reason why they're staggering is to stop people from going into the different into Wales and into Scotland get England yeah. sorted out first and slowly move it to, to Scotland and then obviously then, then move it over to Wales I think I think that's what's going to happen Yeah, Dave Mann 68 second hand values unrealistic, uh, unrealistic at the moment are they well supply and demand isn't it yeah yeah Supply and demand. Yeah. yeah. It's going that we'll way. See. Yeah, Dad, we're, we're probably back to prices. We were off in three years ago at the moment. Yeah. And <laughs> um, the people who um, we've sold some motorhomes to this week have all not been motorhomes who've come up and gone, Luke, we ain't going to go abroad, so we better get ourselves a motorhome. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 
Russ Finn, Spinny has gone from 125 motorhomes down to 85 now in the last two weeks. Yep. Well, they're going to because, they, yeah, they're not getting any delivered, are they? Uh, did they do many news to Spinny? I can't remember. They're more your way, aren't they? Spinny, yeah. They brought out a place in Newcastle on the Lime and they're uh, nuts for some batch way. Yeah. Spinny are. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do okay. a lot of new stuff, mate. Dirty Trucker, what do you think of American RV? Seen some on eBay, they look so comfy but too big. Um, for what they go for, I think they're a lot of van, but the problem is we haven't got the roads for RVs. We haven't really got the campsites for RVs either, is the other problem. There's no. like a lot of, especially the caravan, motor and club and so on, the, the limited seven and a half metres in length, or they've only got so many longer pitches, should I say. Yeah. And yeah. you don't get many RVs under seven under that sort of at that sort of size. You tend to find dirty trucker. Uh, the people who have the RVs are normally uh, HGV drivers who will work, and then over winter they'll take them over to Spain for two or three months. James Scottish Cummins have said the campsite are to open on fifteenth of July. There you go. Yeah, that makes sense. Like I said, they they opened their golf courses a week and a half ago, something like that. Right. So obviously they're I think they're two or three weeks behind, so that's about in line with what's happening really. Okay. Stephen B, two families in my street brought a motor home this week, both newbies. Yeah. It's, 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 I think all the people that have already got a motor home is, is sat there thinking, well, I'll just keep hold of mine for a bit. Otherwise I'll have yeah. to over I'll have to pay a little bit more for some. Yeah. Probably as well, if you've got a motorhome and you're looking to change your motorhome, it's probably a good time because you're going to get a good price um, if you're part exchange. Yeah, definitely. Because from a dealer's point of view, he's selling a van, but he's also getting another van back in. Vincent, good evening from the Republic of Ireland. Brilliant. Republic of Ireland, eh? I know. Sid, good evening. Is it true motorhomes are holding really well on second-hand values? Yes, 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 Sid. Are, are they holding or are they going up? Well, they're going up, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think so, yeah. Here with Motorhome. Hi, guys. Loving the show. How long have we been doing the show now, Shane? I think this is, eight, is this the eighth episode. And we have plus the one before. Yes, we did the motorhome show. No, didn't we? Zero. So we've been doing yeah. this two months, haven't we? Yeah. How long are we going to keep doing this? When do, when do you retire? Next week, by the way, we get yeah. <laughs> new stock. Yeah. <laughs> the Beckwiths, I'm guessing these people buying motorhomes haven't realised they can hire them. <sighs> That's well, true, if you, but I mean, this, it, it would be interesting on the hiring side of things because of how long they need to turn it around and sanitise it. Yeah. So, Do you know what? I was thinking about this, actually, Shane, going into the hire, why this is on. Getting two or three got, motorhomes and, and hiring them out. It's an idea as long as you've got the stock to replace the bits that are broke, which could be the other side of things that could that, be an issue. Always, yeah, yeah. Because obviously you've got to, as soon as the motorhomes come back, you've got to, you've got to valet it all up, check it all off again, and turn it back around as well. So, yeah. Uh, well, uh, yeah. Noel, highlights Ireland are open the site on the 29th of June in the south. Don't know about the north. This is how crazy it was, mate. He's one for you. He's one for yep. you. I had a phone call on the Wednesday um, about a motorhome we got in, a guy from Northern Ireland. Transferred the money Thursday morning, flew over Thursday night, and drove it off Friday morning. Yep. That's how nuts it is. Yeah. Yeah. That's how crazy it's going. Caravan Onions, it will be interesting to see what the commercial campsites will do regarding pitch prices, especially with more and more people having staycations. I think at the moment they just need to recoup some money in. Yeah, I mean, I it's, it's, a, it's a bit, it's a bit like motorhomes. If if there's the demand's there, the price has obviously got to hold, and 
Yeah, yeah, a lot of people don't realise as well, a lot of the campsites haven't had these grants and they have these uh, bounce back loans and things like that as well. And they've still got to keep looking after the sides. They've still got to keep cutting the grass. They've still got to keep trimming the edges. They've still got to keep making sure everything's okay. Uh, and they just need some cash. And we, we're going to try and get somebody in uh, who runs a campsite on. I think that would be a good angle to look at as well and, and see how it's affected them, don't you think? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, just how, yeah, just how they're going to handle things when people are coming on site, what they've got in place, everything. It's a, it's a big, uh, it's a big operation to, to get yeah. your head around. Tick tock, tick tock, mate. It's that time. Yep. Shall we get someone on? Who shall we get we on? Shall do. Yes. Uh, who should we get on? I don't know. You introduce him. <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys. How are we doing? Are you... Can everyone hear me? All right. You are? You can hear me all right, yeah? Say again. <laughs> Take it, that's yes. <laughs> we have David from Collapse Products. Collapse Products. Tell us all about yourself, David. Uh, I can start right from the beginning. Uh, a mm. bit of, bit of um, overview about myself. I studied product design, so I've always had an interest uh, in obviously developing products. Yeah. Um, and uh, back in uh, 1999, that was the first time I started getting involved with the Far East and importing products to uh, deliver into um, multiple retailers. Was that for a company then, David? Yeah, working for other companies, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, that just to give you a bit of an overview where you know this all sort of started from. Um, 2005, I set up Sources which is where Collapse falls under the Sourced umbrella as a brand. So we develop products for other companies as well. Sources develop products? Yeah, we develop products for other companies as well. Right. And then obviously you set up Collapse under the umbrella? Yeah, as our own in-house brand. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that all started in 2005, but it was 2010 when – the collapse side of things started you know we we actually initially went into the gardening industry which right. is where we had a lot of experience right this is with collapse then yeah right. yeah so what products did you start how, how, how did collapse come about what was what was your thoughts with it so what um it was it's the material so you've all a lot of people are familiar with the material so it was this material which i spotted on my travels to the far right. east yeah and i thought do you know there could be, there's some potential here to do something a bit different right um and the first product we actually came up with and launched was a uh water butt 200 liter water butt for the garden right okay. and at the same time we were also thinking about a watering can right have we so, got that shade i think we do you probably haven't got the water bus no we've got the watering can i believe haven't got we? Watering can. you've got, got a watering, watering can. can yeah yeah so 10 leak 10 litre, 7 that, litre that, That's an 8 litre. Well, it was 10 litre bucket and 7 litre watering can. Right. And then that just collapses straight down, David? Yeah, it just collapses straight down, yeah. Twist right. down, yeah. So this was originally for gardens then, was it? Well, that was the that was the thinking behind it. We, the, the trade shows that we went to, we had a lot of interest from the retailers. Right. So... Uh, we sold into some distributors. Uh, we sold it into direct to some retailers as well. But there wasn't, you know, they, this was going into the sort of DIY, the garden centers, but they didn't really appreciate the space saving aspect of the product. Right. Did you design that then? Yeah. Yeah, we we've design actually, everything in house ourselves. We've actually got somebody clever on. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just myself, there's, 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 there's other guys involved. No, don't, don't yourself, <laughs> <laughs> I, I've got a lot of the ideas, um, but we also get ideas from the community, you know. In so, what way? Well, we engage with the community a lot. You know, Dan, Dan actually has been an important part of where we are today. Um, you know, we actually first spotted Dan on uh, Carry On Caravanning in 2016. Um, uh, and it was really from that we started to, you know, Dan put us in touch with different bloggers and vloggers. Um, and we started to engage, really engage with with the end consumer. Right. So I, right. So you said that the blogging community has been really helpful for you, then. Very, very helpful to us. Yeah. Yeah. 
Just got a quick question coming in. Bob Earnshaw, any news on the collapse freshwater carrier? Yeah, so Bob's referring to when we were at the... We've been working on a uh, collapsible Aquarol uh, uh, version uh, for the 40 litres, um, which is not an easy task. We've been working on it for a number of years. Um, we launched it at the NEC in February as a as the first prototypes to get some feedback. Um, and overall, you know, it was a positive uh, result. Uh, we also had the waste version of it. Um, but fr from there, we've sort of taken that, you know, the, the sort of feedback, we've reevaluated, and we're actually looking to do a s smaller version, um, which I touched on. Basically, it's a 20 litre version, so you can link um, multiple vessels together, but it's it appeals to a sort of a wider audience, not just the caravan uh, community, but also the sort of camping community as well. So basically, the products that you did then, the motorhome and caravan and camping community jumped onto these products that you were doing. How we got into it was I, don't, I didn't mention to you the other day, but uh, we were on Dragon's Den in 2015. Right. Right. So we went on there uh, under the, pr promoting the Collapse brand, uh, talked about Sorted, that we develop people's ideas. And a lot of it was for um, from a marketing uh, aspect. So and from that, um, we were looking to go into the camping world. We thought this is where, you know, space is an issue. So but from that, we had a lot of people contacting us saying that they like the watering can to top up the onboard tanks for the toilets, for the motorhomes um and straight away that you know the next uh, exhibition at the nec in october that year we were there with the watering can and you know the rest really is you know history so that's what took us into this into this uh into this market it's amazing how things evolve though isn't it yeah we, we, we don't do anything in the gardening industry now um it's all for the caravan camping motorhome camper van world how do you get your products out there then? Uh, well, we the, the we initially were working through uh, distributors, um, but we found that uh, we st we were also selling on our website. Uh, we started a little bit on Amazon, but you know we we, we didn't really have the expertise with Amazon, um, and we just didn't find that the the, the distributors were doing the sort of what we wanted uh, to really, you know, because there's a lot of products in their portfolio. So we started to do a lot more of the exhibitions ourselves. So the NEC ourselves, Warner shows, and just engaging with, with the consumer and, and getting people, you know, so we invested that time and money into doing the shows ourselves, buying more stock ourselves and, and selling direct to consumer. So you're basically direct from the website, isn't it, really, then? Website, I'll yeah. be honest, Amazon is the biggest part of our business now. Um, yeah. We've got someone who, who knows what they're doing, and we sell now across Europe, um, and we're, we're, we're going into the States as well with us. Right, fair play to you. You've got to keep pushing, yeah. though, David, haven't you? You've just got to keep going. Well, you that's can't... it. You know, we, 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 uh, we, 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 we've got a lot of new products in the pipeline. Um, and you better get say, Linda's pipes in the post. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I know there's a lot of pipe. There's a lot of pipes going out at the moment. Um, so yeah, they're popular. I think you know possibly the pipes are popular for service pitches. Um, so I think service pitches are going to be popular now because of the old because of the lockdown. Uh, you know, people will want to go onto those particular pitches so they don't have to keep you know emptying the waste and uh, filling up the fresh water. What's the most popular product for a motorhome or caravan? And make sure it's cheap because we're going to put it up as a prize, uh, Shane. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, the flexi pipes, you know, they are uh, popular. And I think when we first, you know, launched the flexi pipes, we we were aiming specifically at the caravan market. But actually, when we the feedback we got from that first show yeah. was that motorhomers wanted it as well. So. Again, listening to the motorhomers, you know, we developed this adapter um, so that it could fit different diameter because they've got there's so many different diameter pipes for motorhomes. So uh, someone said they were using a pond adapter, um, so which was rigid. But so we said, oh, we'll develop one which is soft and flexible and will fit lots of different pipes, and you can just cut it to size very easily. Um, so that's, that's a great idea, Dave. 
I understand what that diagram is now. Yeah, we were discussing that earlier, David. Yeah, it's so you know, and it's interesting. You know, again, from doing the shows with this, you can see the smallest diameter goes down to seventeen millimeters internal. Now, before that, it was nineteen. And people who've got an eldest motorhome, the the waste outlet is tiny, so we had to take it to seventeen millimeters. So we altered the tooling. Um, uh, it was back in I think it was September last year after doing the Warner shows. Uh, so now it also fits the eldest motorhome. So um, yeah, so it's a good, it's a simple bit of uh, kiss, but uh, it works so well with the flexi pipes. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's that's. Um, Probably our most popular item, along with uh, it was that simple, Dave. It was that simple, David. We didn't even know what it was. <laughs> but now, the motorhome, what, huh? a, what a great idea that is, Shane. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, how many of them pipes do you need in that in that pipe there? Do you need a half a dozen or more? What, what what can we give away? Shall we? Well, give the, the, yeah, the pipe. Well, we do a four pipe kiss. Yeah, uh, and the, and the adapter. Um, so the the you know that's probably the, the most popular for the motorhomers. Um, right. and, and that other adapter with it as well. Yeah. So the yeah. The, the adapter there. Yeah. And, so then, and then all the pipes as well. Four four pipes. Yeah, and the pipes come with a we we do this brush cleaning brush so that you can clean them through like that. And it comes it has a chain as well. I haven't got it on this one here, but when in the extended state, you can pull it through all the way and clean the pipes all the way through. How much is that lot, David? So th these pipes uh, with the brush and a bag is £30 and the adapter is £7. Right, so if me and Shane pay for that, um, we will put it up as a prize. And would you be able to post it out for us? Yeah, no problem, yeah. Right then, to win this prize, 40 quid's worth of collapsed products, I'm going to ask you a question. Oh, hang on a minute. Extreme Motor Adventures. We are struggling to get a correct fitting for our grey waist as it's a German model. Maybe we need to try this. What? Yeah. You don't need to try it. You can win it. It depends <laughs> what size. This this goes up to 50 mil, 50 millimetres. Yeah. Right. So to win the prize, 40 quid's worth of Claps products. Um, we're actually going to get Dan to pick the winner. So here's the question. If you could collapse anything, what would it be? If you could collapse anything, what would it be? So I hope Dan's watching the comments because he's going to have to pick a winner and then we'll, <laughs> we'll speak to David um, and get them out to him, to whoever wins it. How's lockdown affected you, David? Uh, because we deal with the Far East initially, uh, for, well, fortunately, we got the main stock of this out before Chinese New Year, but we had um, our watering cans, and we do also do a water carrier. Uh, because of the, the, the virus all started in China, um, our shipment out of China got delayed for about a month and a half. So the stock only came in uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, so that impacted us that side. In terms of the sales here in the UK, we were still selling. Um, one of one, an item, one of the products we've got is a portable shower. So it literally comes in a, a small bag. I've got one here. So this is the portable shower. Um, I th a lot of people were buying this for. Um, this one, this one, David. No, no, it's not. That, that's a different yeah, product. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I didn't send you a picture of this. This, <laughs> this is this is very popular with tent. Uh, users um, and I think because of the potential of not being able to use shower facilities you know so this has been really popular and I think also where people maybe have to have to self-isolate um, they've been buying this you know to shower themselves down so I mean no camper van people who have done that they've lived in the camper van to self-isolate and, and to have the, use that as a shower so we've been we've been reasonably busy um, we, I'll be honest the showers we haven't been able to keep up with demand <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's not yeah. surprise. Yeah, we're all getting that problem now, David. I know. Well, now, yeah, sales are picking up now because obviously there's there's talk about uh, you know getting out in July, August. So uh, sales are certainly sort of picking up. Uh, can you just pop some of these comments up because they're getting quite amusing. I am actually. Doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the first, so the my, first one. Yeah, go on. Dave, man, my ego. Uh, dirty Chuck, a waste master. I think that's available today. Bagpipes. 
<laughs> there's, there's some great ones here. Damien Dan's little man. <laughs> <laughs> David man, my overdraft. <laughs> A motorhome, Bobbage or fitted in parking spots. Linda, my belly. Uh, yeah, I'm, that's that's my ideal. <laughs> James a <laughs> kayak. <laughs> Terry the tin, I would collapse the amount of chocolate and beer to that is consumed by me. <laughs> the Beckwith caravan to fit in the boot of the car. David collapsed 2020, so it goes away. <laughs> <laughs> David, I thought we'd get some really good ones you could develop, but I'm struggling for you. <laughs> I'm struggling. <laughs> <laughs> there's still there's still time yet <laughs> there is Gary collapsed the wife of the passage seat white toe with the caravan now just a quick year David I've just been thinking about this um, obviously a lot of you a lot of the business comes through the website I, I would have thought the shows would be quite important to you as well yeah, the shows they they are important to us, and we, you know we 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 did uh, last year was the first time we did the Warner shows, uh, and we did three of those shows, and we had uh, booked to do five of them this year um, because Edinburgh was a new show uh, as well. So um, yeah, you know we, we, I think uh, because people can't go to the shows, so possibly we're seeing that uplift in in those online sales. Um, but yeah, you know we, we want uh, the big ones for us is the NEC. Um, you know, there's the October show, which, you know, there's rumours that's not going to go ahead. So we're hoping that possibly February will go ahead. But if not, we will, you know, be like we have been doing during lockdown. We've been engaging a lot with uh, the, the the vloggers and bloggers and our whole community. Um, just, you know, keeping our name in their minds. Um, and, you know, we'll continue to do that. Um do you, yeah. do, you, do you sell a lot at the show? Or is it more awareness? Uh, we do sell quite a bit at the show. Yeah, yeah. We had, you know, February was a busy show for us. Um, you know, because we got more product. Um, we had the forty-five liter, which we had there as well. So that was the first time we were launching that. And we had given quite a bit of space to it. So, um, yeah, the show, the shows are important to us in terms of turnover as well. But you know, they're not cheap shows either. The NEC show, NEC is not a cheap show. Available today are asking lead generation better than shows. Lead generation better than shows. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'd say the shows are probably, um, you know, they're, they're going to be important for us going forward. So um, we've, we, hopefully they'll, they will start to open up, you know, uh, in time so especially for us the october show is when you're launching new product ready for the for the coming season what was on the cards for october then david uh the plan is uh more products around uh the, the shower so we've got a lot of things that's going to be adding on to that but also this this 20 liter version which i've we've mentioned yeah you know we we, we uh we wanted to sort of take that to the show and, and and have that ready for spring next year so that is still the intention to have that out for spring next year so that was the plan to have that there any other sectors you sell to then no just so purely this is we are focusing on on caravan camping world yeah right so yeah well, what about marine a good question we uh went to the crick boat show last year uh which is narrow boats um and uh it, it was okay but nothing like um and i think it's because only certain products will appeal to them where you know you go to the nec the caravan camping motorhome you know the whole all of the products tend to you know appeal to quite a you know a large market so the marine we decided it's not for us maybe it might come in the future but for now it's this is where we're focusing so if you want to win 40 quids worth of collapse accessories you need to answer a question if you could collapse anything what would it be and uh, dan later in the show is going to pick the question uh me and shane will pay for it and then uh, david will uh, send it out on the post to you any other ones coming up uh, there is yes quite a few latitude hmm. adventures wastemaster and aquarol Chris Bowden, my waist hose. 
Damien claps my eight foot caravan so I can tow it faster. I'm not helping you, David. I'm sorry. I'm trying to get him. the little nugget where you go. Yes. That's the one. <laughs> caravan onions, the kids, so they can be shut away when making too much noise. Latitude Adventures, food grade hose. We, we've got the flexi. This is one of ours, the trunk. There you go. Collapse lockdown, Paul Joyce. Well, well, we'll, we'll I'll take calorie collapse, Paul. David, we'll, I think we'll find you the little nugget by the end of the show. <laughs> so, um, David, it's been brilliant. Some of them products have got great shade, aren't they? They are. They're very good. I, I can see why they do so well. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So to get all of Collapse products, it's collapse.co.uk. Uh, everything's on the website, David. Everything's on the website, yeah, and we're in stock at the moment. So, uh, yeah, so get it's all the products, there. Get the products now because you're going to be camping next month and you're going to need these Collapse products. David, you've been a star. Thanks very much, matey. And hopefully Thank you very much. For... again in the future. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Thanks very much, David. It's been Take good. Care. Thank you. No problem. Cheers. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks, David. Bye. Speak soon. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Do you know what we were talking about that product earlier on, didn't we? What a cracking idea that is. The one where it you is, cut yeah, down, yeah. put it back up again. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that one. Yeah. Now I can see now that's where you cut it down, isn't it? The different measurements. Yeah. You can, and then it ends up like that on the yeah. uh, on the pipe. That's a great idea. You could, it would be one of those things you'll probably end up buying everything. Yeah. If you want to get your questions in, you want to be on the show, um, easy, dead simple. Follow me on Twitter. I will follow you back. Uh, Caravans and Campers at SY45RP. You can get me on Instagram as well, at the Motorhome Man. And you can also email us, Shane. Uh, no, not that one. This one, the Motorhome Show at gmail.com. You're in trouble now, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> also, if you enjoyed the show, give us a like. Um, you can follow me on the Motor Man YouTube channel, and you can follow Shane on. Uh, we buy a motor caravan. Uh, oh. We buy a motor caravan. Yep. Channel. So we've just... also got the Motor Home channel as well, which we've we're just building up slowly. Yeah, you could subscribe to us, and we've also got a podcast, haven't we, Shane? We have uh, the Motor Home Show. Uh, nice and easy. Just search it in. And uh, you can listen to us whenever you want to. Isn't that nice? I nearly forgot him earlier, you know. Who? Lee? Oh. Lee? Shall we bring him on? Easy to do. Hey, up. All right. right. I forgot yeah, you yeah. did that. I texted you dead late. <laughs> I know. And I've had oh. some tech issues as well. I only just literally only just got on. What's happened? Oh, I was having trouble connecting my headphones. What sorted have you, now. What have you been up to this week? This week, I've actually taken on an apprentice. New apprentice, living apprentice. A living apprentice? Can I meet him? Living apprentice. Can I meet him? Okay. A living apprentice. It's my, it's my new apprentice. Oh. It's my oh, new apprentice, God. Sam. Here we go. Is it, Sam. He's going to be cut. Sam, yeah. He's going to be coming with me, and we're going to come to yours. And he's going to nick your dinner. <laughs> is he any better at fitting awnings? Yeah, is he any, yeah. Is he any better at fitting awnings? Up. <laughs> <laughs> it's love at first sight, isn't it, Ellie? Oh, he's a good lad. He's a good lad. How long have you had him? We picked him up Friday. Right. Yeah, it was, uh, it was wife's birthday Friday, so we managed to get to pick him up for her birthday so oh did she know yeah 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 my wife knew my daughter didn't she had a bit of a shock when she knew we were having one but she didn't think we were having it for another six or eight weeks so yeah she was a bit surprised what have you been up to last week um working busy 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 um it's everyone's expecting this um fourth of july start so they're all desperate to try and get hold of you to get in and uh get the servicing done prior to then but 
you know, I'm unfortunately having to let people down at the minute because I've got that much work booked in. You know, I'm sort of talking August, September before I can even start doing the, anyone that's ringing me now, really. He's a good one for you. I had somebody phone me up and say, my Truma heating on the electric isn't working. What do you think? What Truma? You know the Truma <laughs> dial? You know the Truma dial? I wasn't oh, yeah. It says it's not working. Oh. I've spent hours trying to find out what it is. The two dial system? Yeah, it's not working on the electric. Uh, you've got to put you it on first, haven't you? And then you pick 500, 1,000 or 2,000. Yeah. Yeah. And he says, I don't know what's happening. Don't know what's happening. What do you think? I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna absolutely throw Liam under the bus for this one. <laughs> the lad that will work. So with you're, talk, you're talking an ultra heat, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. not coming on. Light's not coming on, it's not working. Fusing the wrong holder. No. Uh, you weren't plugged in. Way <laughs> <laughs> Te technically it was plugged in. But the the electric hook up to the two forty volt adapter wasn't properly. So it wasn't hooked in. Yeah, not really, no. <laughs> <laughs> Fairly is a very good lesson to learn, mate, when you get a problem. Start from the source and work your way along, Glee, isn't it? Yeah. If if I normally say first thing I'll say, um I'll cover that one set. I normally say if people are having trouble with electrics, first thing to do, press your test button on your RCD. If it trips off, you know you've got a supply to the van. If it doesn't trip off, you've got no power coming to the van. That's the first thing I said to Yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> The problem is, though, Lee, though, you can get caught in the moment, can't you? And people yeah. you know, what's there. Uh, yeah. But it, it is, it, it's, it's just starting from the... Start from your source and just work your way down the line, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, and they're not that difficult when once you, once you work your way. I suppose it's experience as well, isn't it? Well, you're lucky you've been trained well, aren't you? <laughs> well, what about you? <laughs> Google trained that, you. <laughs> that that little puppy was Jason a, a couple of years ago. Yeah, I tell you, I tell you what, I yeah, <laughs> were we all? <laughs> I tell you what I've had. I know what it is, but well, I've got a fridge that keeps tripping on the electric. Shane, I put it on to two thirty. The fridge is tripping on the electric. Right. Oh, sorry, Lee. Oh, Lee. You <laughs> weren't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're asking you me for. <laughs> I have no idea. Fridge, trip, fridge is tripping on the electric. Um, is there a sink above it? No. I'd say an element failure. Yeah, that's what I'm going for. I'm going for an element. So yeah. it's always though. Yeah, oh, it, is, it is. It is quite common. People will jump straight on an element, but if you've got sinks above fridges, you know you can get a leak from underside of the tap or from the waste, and it'll drop onto the top of the fridge, make its way to the PCB or the two thirty connections. See there, you, that's the prop. That's what does my head in with Aldi's motorhomes. They've got the sink and the taps yeah. over the top of the fridge. Why are you putting water on top of electric? I don't know how they get away with it. It's no, no, no. it's it's poor design. And have you tried to have you tried to change the taps on the Aldi's when the when the taps are over the top of the fridge? Yeah, yeah. There's there's some even worse that you've actually you've got to take the fridge out completely because the sink is fixed from the underside yeah so you have to take the fridge out completely so that you can get your hand up at the back of the the tap um to be able to get that out there though some of them are a nightmare aren't they just mate aren't they just yeah um, let's have some shout outs available today lee there is such demand for mobile services how do you think a nationwide service will go down i.e aarac um there is I mean, I'm, I work for myself. I've got my own business, um, but I am an approved workshop, which is um, a nationwide thing. Um, I'm also a member of the Mobile Caravan Engineers Association, which is, again, a nationwide um, setup. Uh, but everyone that is a member of it runs their own business, but it just gives you access to, to different bits and bobs. So there are 
networks of engineers, uh, whether it be approved workshop or MCA engineers throughout the country anyway. Did you get some shout outs, uh, Shade? Or any Did you get a question from earlier on? There was, but unfortunately there's too many comments coming through and I can't go back to it. So if you, there, was, there was a question about 10 minutes into the show. If you can just drag it back out and just put it back on the comments again, that would be much appreciated because I can't go that far back, unfortunately. Stephen B, Lee, or Aldi's back? I am waiting for parts. I'm not sure. I think uh, Shane's I... asked that question because that, that, that little face looks like Shane, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think some of them are starting back now. Um, there is going to be a backlog up. Backlog, backlog, even of parts um, to to get out to people. I'm literally received a window on Friday that I've been waiting for since early March. Um, so yeah, things are starting to get back out now, but it's going to take a bit of time. There's there's obviously quite a lot of stuff to catch up with. Anything else, Shane? Bring some more. Aldis is back. Supply chain isn't. The, the problem I've got now is I'm that busy now getting back out to work that I'm not having a chance to check updates of stuff of who's back and who isn't, really. Well, when you first come on the show, you're dead keen and everything. Now you've got a bit of slack, <laughs> haven't you? Now you've got the fame of the yeah. Tory team, everybody right. ringing you for services. It's all right for you. Half a day job. Oh, oh, Steve you don't even P. Start I'll... For dinner time. I... Are breathable covers worth buying for a motorhome, Lee? Um, best thing to do is use them all year round. But if if not uh, if not viable, then uh, yeah. As long as you give the van a good clean before you put them on, uh, you don't want to put a cover on any dirty vehicle, really, because you'll just damage the paintwork, etc. On it. But um, yeah, the the new breathable covers, I d I don't see a problem with them. Football's back on Wednesday, isn't it? I know. Champions next weekend. <laughs> I forgot you were a Liverpool fan. I tell you what I've seen. <laughs> I tell you what I've seen, Lee. Um, I saw in Denmark, I think it is, they're playing their matches and down one side of the stadium, uh, by the by the side of the on the, on the terraces, they've got um TV TV screens and they're basically filming people watching at home. So then, like, and what happens? It showed this team, this, the home team, they scored a last-minute equaliser, and you saw all these people on these big screens all applauding and everything else, and it looked brilliant, you know. And then all the players went at the end, went over to all these screens so they could interact. And the manager said, he says, when I was watching it, and we scored. I looked over to this one screen, and this woman had, had jumped up and kissed her husband. He says, brilliant! What a great idea, Lee. Yeah, mine that catch me wife telling me to stop making so much noise because you're scaring the bloody cats. That's what I normally get. Dog, dog, dog. And the dog. No, the dog's <laughs> all right. He's from gun dog stock, so he's used to a lot of noise. Yeah, so what? is mine. But if you get a firework on, it's under the t it's under the sofa. Oh, no, he's he loves the noise so far. Yeah. We'll find out tomorrow when he gets in the van. It's the first time out? Yeah, yeah. What are you up to next week? Um, I've got a lot of service work to catch up with. I've got that window to fit, that which will uh, cheer the gentleman up no end. Um, yeah, it, it is just catch up with service work. There's just so much to do. I'm, I'm quite fortunate now because I've got um, my nephew working with me till he goes to college in September to try and help me catch up a bit, um, who is a cracking young lad, really is. Uh, and having that extra pair of hands really helps. So, uh, so yeah, so I've got him with me, which means that I can try and catch up with some repair work that was prior to um, lockdown. So, yeah. This is the only question from uh, Gary Squirely. Caravan, a whale eater on gas doesn't restart after reaching temperature okay on electric. <sighs> Hmm. Well, that now, whale whale systems will throw up fault codes with a flashing light system. Um, so a bit like if a Morse it's, code, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's it's just a series of flashes. 
um, and depending on how many flashes it are, they are will tell you what the fault is. Um, if it's not throwing up a fault, then if it's the room heater, hmm, maybe a board issue. Yeah, because I would be difficult. Well, there'd be a few things you'd need to check. Well, if I, I was going to say stat, but if it's working on electric, electric, yeah, then yeah, it'd be one of them you'd need to have a look at that. Really, that's a bit whale blown Warren, air heating system. Warren Blackwell, how do you rate whale blown air heating systems? Well, you've got a choice, um, haven't you? You've either got um, whale, you've got Truma, and you've got Aldi, haven't you? Yeah. So, do you want to rate them in order? Um, in order, best to word. The problem with the whale system is it's under slung. Yeah. And you know full well when we had all that problem with flooding, we had to change that one on one of your baileys because it was water had got into the pipe work, into the actual unit itself. It had completely ruined it. <clears throat> That's what lets them down working wise they are a really good heating system um same with the truma and same with the alder the big difference between those heating systems is the whale and the truma are more of an instant heat so once you switch them on the van will warm up a lot quicker but once you shut it off it'll cool down a lot faster whereas with the alder system it does take that bit longer to warm up but once you've got it up to temperature, that hot fluid continues circulating like it would in a heating system in your house, um, which then keeps the van warmer for longer. So there is more maintenance to the Alder system as well because the fluid requires changing and you know keeping an eye on the level on it, etc. So if you, so, if, you yeah. pick, if you if you could pick a system for your van, whatever it would be, what's your preference? <laughs> Um, I would probably go with the Truma. Okay, I'll agree with you on that, mate. Yeah, I'd, I think I'd go with the Truma. They just tried and tested and just. Yeah, yeah, and and the good thing with the Truma blown air system, which loads of people don't realise, when you get on that, if you've got the um, iNet panel, if you scroll across yeah. to the fan setting and click it, um, and turn it round when everything else is off, the heating and hot water. It says vent. You can then press that and set that speed, and you've got a cool air fan to blow cool air around the van, which you haven't got with the um, Alder system or the Whale system. So, Gary Gary Sainley, full code says check flu flu. Okay. Yeah, you may have a flu imbalance. Then it could be a flu imbalance. It could be something as simple as um, spiders got in it put web across it <laughs> gary if you could you just put lee's facebook up mate yes gary if you uh, message through where uh, lee's facebook um i'll be kind of on service levels. i think uh, lee will probably put you in the right direction i'm all right there lee yeah yeah it's, send me a message on that and uh even if you can send me a little video of what the the flash code is um yeah We'll see where we can go. Okay. Right. Any more coming up? Yep. Linda, question for my partner, Anthony, for Lee. Can you fix old Carver heaters, please? We've done a few Carvers, mate. There's no new parts available for Carver heaters. Oh. Do, do you it's going to be the burning unit, mate. It's going to be the burning unit. Yeah, yeah, we probably will. Um, I've actually got one in the workshop, actually, that this slide control's gone on at the moment. Um, yeah, the old Carver heaters, the parts aren't available any, anymore for them. That's the biggest problem you get with them. So any parts you get, especially gas parts, will be reconditioned parts. So do you do the same insurance-wise? Do you do I the can't same, do it. Same as me, like, Do you send them off to? Is it Canic and they uh, recondition them for you? A and O Electronics. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. to, to be fair, there's another engineer close to me, and I normally refer Carver repairs onto him because of my I, I'm not covered by my insurance to fit reconditioned or second hand gas spares. So yeah. unless they're a new spare part, I just don't don't do it. It's it's easy for me just to send it on to Ian or, or um, Adrian and say, listen, here's a job for you if you want it. Again, Linda, if you need any help, just get a uh, message um, Lee on his, on his Facebook page. Extreme Motorhome Adventures, love the top tip about the trauma onto vent for cool air. Surprised me, thought Alda was rolls royce uh, Alda's a great system. It is really yeah. a good system, and I get very, very little faults with the Alda system compared to the trauma. For me personally, I mean, I've got customers who swear by it, so they'd never go back to a trauma system because they love the the almost like a home heating system it's a bit um, more even isn't it rather than yeah yeah but for me personally for for what i use my van for i would uh i'd have the trimmer but the the, the thing with the alder system as well now um uh, initially it was put and it's surprising i did a service this week um third year service who never been told by the dealer i've gone to the do it for the third year and said your yeah, alder fluid is due for replacement because it was due after two years um and that's replaced with the g13 five-year fluid from 2020 alder have insisted that all manufacturers put five-year fluid in from day one so if you've had a 2020 van you won't need to change your fluid in two years time your fluid will be good for five years Okay, last question now then. Phil Bunt, any recommend any recommendations for two leisure batteries, 110 amp each, cost £100 each, any makes to avoid as well? Um, if you can find me 210 amp hours for under 100 quid, can you let me know? The, a, a good 110 amp hour, I would say you're looking at probably a roundabout. I mean, I, I tend to use new Max a lot, as I know yeah, you I do. Use new Max. Um, I've got a new Max battery on my van, which I use every day, um, charge it up once a week. I've had that that battery on the van for five years, and it's still going strong. That's 110 amp hour. Um, but those those batteries are around about 130 odd quid each. Am I right in thinking, Jase? 110... Yeah, right. They don't do the 110 now. They've actually. No, it's 105. It's, it's 105, um, not 110. Um, See, but yeah, I, always, they, I always get the Motorhome one, the Motorhome battery, Leisure Batteries one, where the sunken lugs. I like the sunken lugs. Yeah. Where the lugs sit proud, sit up, sorry. Yeah. I like the sunken lug ones. Yeah, they're all 105. Yeah. Uh, all right, mate. Let you get back to your doggy. <laughs> So, will I see the dog next week? Um, yeah, probably will. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually in Wim. I'm actually in Wim tomorrow afternoon. So, yeah, you'll have that everywhere with him next week. Oh yeah, yeah. My guard dog, in case anyone tries to get in the van. <laughs> <laughs> like you or Steve? If, if you had, if you had a family dog before, Lee. Yeah, yeah. We used to have a beagle. Okay. Yeah, and he wasn't one to come to work with you. He'd be petrified in case the door opened and he'd be gone. Ah. Right. Speak to you later, matey. All right, mate. No worries. All right. Thanks, speak mate. to you later, mate. Turn up. See you in a bit. There we go. Um, if you want to be on the show, you want to ask questions, uh, just generally anything, you can follow me on Twitter. Oh, you're a bit quicker there, weren't you? Yeah. On Caravans and Campers at SY45RP, I'll follow you back. And you can get me on Instagram at the Motro Man. You could also email us. The Motro Show at gmail.com. And subscribe to our YouTube channels, The Motorhome um, Man. And also, We Buy a Motor Caravan. And you can listen to us at the podcast, The Motorhome Show. Ooh, we're getting a bit professional here, aren't we? We're getting... I know, I know. It's boring, isn't it? Isn't he just? Right. Shall we bring him on? We shall. Dan from the Trudgeons. Really looking forward to this. Evening. 
Do you know what? You've been mentioned about your gyms and everything. I oh, thought my hard stuff tonight. I better get prepared and get a wide. <laughs> do you want to see what? Uh, do you want to see which one I'm drinking today? Please. This is a. This is really nice, actually. Um, I've been drinking this one all day. In fact, we're drinking uh, simply still spring water today. <laughs> because I thought I can't come on this show and slur my words, um, so I thought, uh, yeah, I would uh, come on sober. That's why I'm drinking water today for a change. Dad, you want me down? I thought you. You, have to, you know what? When you do your kind of a chat, you have this big, big bowl. And Listen, like, I'll tell you the Lord. truth. Okay, last time we did the podcast, uh, so Andy Morley, John Feeney, and myself, we did the podcast. The last one that came out. And I was drinking quite a few big drinks, big gins. I mean, Angela was filling them up as quickly as I was drinking them. It took us four hours to record that episode. And literally, I had to cut so much out because I was just saying so much. It was ridiculous. I enjoy that, you know. I really enjoy Why don't you do many of them? Because it takes so long for me to put them together. Um, you know, I, I, I don't just sit around doing nothing all day, even though my physique says otherwise. I uh, we it takes a lot of time to edit them down because we do say a lot of things which are completely unmentionable. Have you thought to do them live? Uh, we did think about it, but honestly, if you're ready, if you're willing, ready to um, to listen to a four-hour waffle of three blokes talking about everything and anything, particularly not to do with caravans, but everything to do with making fun of Andy Morley's accent, then you know, yeah. <laughs> But I don't think people would be wanting to listen to a four-hour waffle. I would. Well, let's have a look in the comments. Put a yay or a nay if you want to, <laughs> to, to three blokes talking about everything and anything. Have you been keeping an eye on the um, collapse prize oh, we're yes. putting out, Dan? Uh, basically, I've got some, uh, I've got some ones written here. For people who've just joined collapse products, we're giving away 40 quid's worth of collapse products. The question, you've got an answer to win it. If you could collapse anything, what would it be? And it can't be Dan. And Dan's <laughs> going to pick it. Pick the, the best one at the end of the show, and we'll get that sent out to you. There's some honourable mentions I'm going to come out with later on, but, you know, some of them are uh, are, are repeatable. <laughs> Toe in the tin. Hi, Dan. Hi, Toe in the tin. Hi, the Beckwiths. Hope you are all well and safe and taking it easy. Uh, it's going to be madness tomorrow out there in the high street, I think. What do you reckon? Keep out of the way. I totally agree. Do you know one thing I've learnt about this um, coronavirus? We've got no common sense, people haven't. Well... It is also, it seems to be that we can no longer say avoid like the plague because apparently we don't seem to be doing that. No, it's, I, I mean, I don't know what Jason feels like being back at work for a week, but this it doesn't feel like there's a lockdown or any sort of restrictions on at all. I mean, it's weird. I it just, I, I lose my faith. I mean, my wife, she's had to be furloughed not because of uh, you know, there's no work for her or the company is shutting down, quite the opposite. Her work wants her back now. But she is. Um, she had to self um, isolate. She had to be, you know, withdrawn from all public services because of what you know her condition. And so we've had to make massive sacrifices. We've really wanted to see our son. We've really wanted to go and see other people, but we haven't. And here I see young twenty somethings walking around, beers in hand, like there's nothing going on. And it's all a good time. Oh, it does my head in. It's the case of it wouldn't happen to me. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, there's a great channel I watch on YouTube called uh, the uh, the Corridor Crew, and they used digital effects to explain the rules of exponential growth, and it's fascinating. And that's exactly what we have in the coronavirus. Nobody took it serious. Even I didn't take it serious to begin with, because no. right at the beginning I was a super skeptical. I thought it was a media hype, and it, it clearly isn't. You know, people far better, far more intelligent than me. Uh, worked out that this was anything but um, stupid media hype. But, I mean, I, I, I didn't know. So no. It all got real, didn't it, when they went, look, stay inside. Yeah. That was the... You, I wouldn't be afraid to admit it. I got really panicky about it, yeah. actually. I got hyper panicky and I got a lot of anxiety about it. I mean, I had, at the beginning, um, I mean, my mates will know, they're in the chat room at the moment, they would know that I went through a really bad patch. I got very panicky because I thought, what on earth were, were doomed? You know, this could have, and I got really quite uptight about it all. But, uh, you, uh, 
to be honest, then you got some stuff. Well, I don't know about yourself, but you, strange thoughts did go into your head because the government doesn't just close a country for nothing. Why would you? You no. know, there's one thing, you know, one of the many chats Andy and I have, he said to me, he said, why would a country shut its borders down, shut itself down? Why would it limit its, its e you know, its economic uh, growth? Why would it do that unless it yeah. was genuinely scared? And I thought, yeah, actually, you're right. Why? <laughs> why would it want to go bust? <laughs> exactly. Why would you want to do it? Anyway, Dan, we're not here to talk about that. <laughs> yeah, Dan, Dan, you've got a fantastic YouTube channel. How did it all Thank start, you. matey? No, that, that's genuine as well, because I really Thank enjoy you. your videos, mate. I really do, and I do watch them. Thank you. Um, it's a story I've said a number of times, so I'll try and say it again and add in a little bit more humour this time. Um, back in 2013, 2014, um, I was sick and tired of never having a holiday. Um, I used to work in IT. I was a very specialist um, person doing one very specialist task. Uh, for an organization I cannot mention and there was only three of us that could do it and I always always had to give up my holidays or swap my holidays we could never plan anything we could never go and do anything like let's go to Egypt for two weeks um, the one time we did book to go to Egypt for two weeks well, I was on the M4 in the car I got a phone call there was a P1 I needed to attend it I came off at Slough I kicked the family out of the car gave them the money to get the bus home and I went off and went into London to sort out the P1. And we, we lost our holiday. I was financially rewarded, so it never seemed a problem, you know, that, that I was never going on holiday. Until one day I just snapped and I said, I'm sick to death of never having a break. I can't go away. So I said to Angela, let's go and buy a caravan. And she said, absolutely no way. Absolutely no way. That's the most ridiculous idea you've ever came up with. Anyway, I talked around um, and I've said it quite famously. She didn't want a caravan. I wanted a caravan. So we compromised and we got a caravan. And it was when I bought the caravan, I, I realised that all my knowledge from back in the early 80s of waking up with a you know, frost on your sleeping bag, frozen pillow, freezing cold, gas lights in the caravan, you know, from the early 80s. My knowledge was an experience was from that. So I went out and I spent a ruddy fortune on every single thing we didn't need. <laughs> because our caravan had outer central heating it had impeccable interior you know it had all the mod cons we ever needed so our four season sleeping bags went out the window the first night we used them and everything i bought was based on my knowledge from the 80s so it was quite clear i had absolutely five eighths of all idea of what to buy for the caravan so after that knowledge and i was searching around i was thinking there's nobody given any decent information here and it came to a head when I wanted to cl uh, uh, clean the caravan. And my boy, Tom, he said to me, he said, well, you know what, Dad, we should film this. We should do it and, um, you know, share it with other people who've got the same questions. It was in storage, wasn't it, when he did it? Yeah. Yeah, I've seen yeah. that one, yeah. Because it was always the problem of, well, how do we clean it? We've got no water. So I went and researched and I bought all these bits that you can get off of Amazon. I used car products. I did this, that, the other. And we worked out this really great regime. And sure enough, it worked. And we filmed it showed how we clean the caravan and that is really where it started and how, how long ago was that dan that you started with all this oh crikey i could um 2015 2016 2016 okay. i think i'd have to look at the date on the video but yeah. um somebody else can tell me um hang on a minute what She's downstairs drinking gin. 2014, <laughs> apparently. There you are. Get uh, a gin up, Dan. Get yeah. a gin up. Can you say it brought live? Angela, get me a gin. And it will arrive here in a minute. Just... <laughs> <laughs> uh, 2014. Uh, and it took us over a year to get 21 subscribers. That's yep. an incredible feat, isn't it? Um, and there wasn't much bubbling around. There wasn't a much, you know... Um, you know people on the community and then one january uh, i i put the camera in the storage yard i just busted both my knees actually um, there's, a, that, there's and, a nice comment mate oh the caravanions dan your Fred channel has the... not only helped the industry grow and give sound advice for newbies to the experienced caravaner but also the amount of youtube channels that i've been inspired to that's a nice comment oh, that's dan. a nice comment isn't it thanks fred i'll pay you later buddy <laughs> um I'll talk about that in a minute, actually. Um, 
but yes, I, I put a, a call to arms essentially. I did one video, said, look, show me around your caravan. Tell me, tell the world what you love about it and what you hate about it. Um, and, you know, off the back of that, quite a few people did. And from there, it slowly built because, you know, in, the, in America, the RV and the camping community, they're massive. The, you know, the channels are huge. They're in the millions. And here in quaint little Britain, they're not that big. But now there's more channels given diversity. There's lots of channels doing lots of different things, going down different paths, different avenues. And it's just wonderful to see. It's a great um, tool, YouTube is, though, isn't it? Gotcha. Yeah. Um, and only way, though, really, is you've got to enjoy it, matey, haven't you? Because it's like a lot of grind in it. It's a lot of hard work. Hmm. You know, I mean, people say you only do it for the money. Well, if you really knew, how much effort goes into it and how much you get back off of, you know, these things, you most definitely don't do it for the money. You told me the other day how many hours to the minute it was, wasn't it? Yeah. So, um, so I do, I do, this is actually my full-time job, not just my YouTube channel, but I create content for other people right. in the caravan and motorhome community in, in industry. But also I do stuff now for outside of the industry. I'm doing stuff for the marine industry as well. Um, so, you know, I'm going in SME pockets, basically. Um, so for every hour of video I shoot, I create one minute's worth of content. And just like that, the gin has arrived. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. T. Right, I'm going to have a go with this, Shane. I'm going to have a go with this. Can I have 500 gram, please? <laughs> this is so big, I have to use two hands. <laughs> now, Dan, oh, that comment you've just said then, a hundred, um, one hour for every minute, just explain that, mate, to people. I get it. I get it. Shane okay. gets it. Other, you, other content creators do get that, but... So I'm quite proud of that ratio because, um, cheers, thank you, David. Um, I'm quite proud of that ratio because that means that that is a lot of work distilled down into one finite point. And that is literally for every hour the camera is rolling, filming something, I can distill that down into a minute's worth of footage that you would see on, your, on, on a video. So I do a lot of filming for Caravan Guard. In fact, I produce 95% of their content. And it was Caravan Guard? caravan guard the insurance people yeah. um great company i'm insured with them if you want discount by the way trudge 10 not sponsored um <laughs> i shoot a lot of this stuff and up to up to the um up to the point of me filming with uh, with liz who i get on so well with we are like a, a we're a real team we uh -oh. looks like dan's had his gin hasn't he? <laughs> He'll be back in a bit. Let, let's get let's get some shout outs up, mate. <laughs> yeah, hang on a minute. There we go. Sorry. There we go. Thank you, James. I, I will just say congratulations, James, for being able to get his Land Rover started today. I haven't got a clue what you're on about. Well, he, he nearly burnt his uh, shed down yesterday. He's restoring a, a Series 3 Land Rover, uh, my mate James. And uh, he turned the key, and all his wires got very hot, and um, nearly caught fire. We we saw the pictures; it was quite impressive. Just on to cars a second. You did a tweet a few weeks back that I saw. You'd made some breakfast, and you're going to watch the Indy car. Do you enjoy the Indy cars? I love motorsport. I, I'll tell you how I got into Indy car a few years ago. I love Formula One. And I just felt it got stale, and I started to watch the IndyCar series. It's brilliant, isn't it? I really enjoy it. I must be honest with you. Um, I only watched the IndyCar because there's no F1 at the moment. You know, it's it, the IndyCar is it's the poor relation to the real thing, yeah. but, in my opinion. But I do love it. I love the fact that all the cars are the same. There's minor differences in the power plant they use. It's all the same. I just love it. But it's oh so American. And I love that. Yeah. You know, it's it's really, really American. I like the ovals as well. Have you ever tried to drive 200 miles an hour in a circle? <laughs> well, I live not far away from Swindon. We've got the magic roundabout. So, yes. <laughs> and we've all done that around the north circle, haven't we, people? 
Uh, <laughs> get some comments up, um, Shane. Yep. <laughs> Damien says you fell off your chair earlier. No. NASCAR rather than IndyCar, Dan? Um, well, does Andy know? He knows nothing. He comes from Birmingham. Oh, can I just say, Andy Morley, Morley, um, just uh, everybody can ridicule him. He's going through a midlife crisis at the moment. He's um, he's wearing flowery shirts and he's just bought himself an MX-5. I'll leave that there for everybody's <laughs> opinions. Yeah. That might, maybe that to, maybe to a lockdown, podcast. can't you, really? <laughs> this is an interesting question. Dan, would you buy a motorhome? We Hold have on. talked about it. We have Hold talked on. about it, but... And it's a very big but for us. I am of the opinion that a motorhome holiday is different to a caravan holiday. In that a motorhome, you're going to tour, you're going to drive more, you're going to go more places, uh, you're going to enjoy the route, uh, you're going to go from point A to point C via B. Um, I would use a motorhome to go around the NC500. In a caravan, we go to a destination we set up base camp and then we explore the area around that location wouldn't mind driving a couple of hours in either direction from that spot and i think it's a different type of holiday now there's no reason why you can't do that in a motorhome but i think the freedom that motorhome provides you is far greater than a caravan but at the moment we just like having a base at the moment when people come to me, Dan, and people ask me, should I have a caravan or a motorhome? My, basically, I say to them, look, if you got if your holiday is going to be stopping somewhere at one place for a week or two weeks, it's a caravan. A motorhome is a day here, two days there, three days, two days, and, and mooching about around the yeah. country. Yeah. 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 Could we just get some comments up? Some really nice comments come up here for, for Dan. That's stroking his ego here. Yeah? <laughs> like this one. Racism towards brummies, Rob B. Rob, if you knew Andy, you'd be on my side as well. BSB is my British sport bikes, David, man. Yeah, yeah, British sport bikes. Yeah, really good. Love it. Drunk already? No, far from it. <laughs> Spot my, on, my mates, my, my mates will know that it takes an awful lot to get me over the hill. I mean, they will refer back to November last year, I'm sure, but my word, it does take an awful lot. This comment here from Warren Dan, spot on about dodgy entrance. Is this the video you did the other day? I saw that with yeah. the boulders either side. Yeah, yeah. So how that came about, last Thursday afternoon, I was um, editing a video up for Caravan Guard, their toilet video, actually. And uh, and uh, Dawn Allard on Twitter tweeted me, and she said, oh, are you aware of the new entrance? And I said, yeah, not, not sure, not sure about that. Um, and then I looked into it a bit more, and sure enough, this looked a bit stupid. And Simonfest is just up the road from us, so we thought um, we'll go in there and we'll, we'll have a look. Went up there, put the camera on the dashboard, and filmed it. My goodness! <laughs> it turns out that actually, I mean, there, I'm going to issue an update about that video in a couple of weeks because, as I understand it, such grief was taken at the club, and so much phone calls were going into the club, the site, and the college that they've now agreed to have a meeting about it next week. So I take that as a moral victory that we cause such a stink uh, that hopefully something will get resolved. Now, obviously, nothing's happened yet, so we may, we'll may just have to sit and wait with bated breath. Hmm. Give us a top tip. Is anybody new to caravans? Take your time. Listen to your dealership. If you're going to buy a caravan, go to a dealer. Don't If you've, you've never been caravanning before, don't go and find a caravan off of Gumtree because you just don't know. Go and talk to a dealer who will talk you through the various layouts, listen to what you want, uh, understand the family size you have, work out whether you have any um, driving license restrictions, um, understand if you are um, you know, of, a, of an age where you don't have privileges on your license, if you're an age which you can tow a larger outfit, understand the car you have, match you with a caravan, go and talk to your dealers. They are there to help you and work out what, what layout would work best for you and take your time. You know, the very first caravan we ever sat in, Angela and I sat in it, we ended up buying it. 
we sat in the caravan for about half an hour and we fantasized about us reading books, the kids running in and out and us drinking lashings of ginger ale on the Devon coast. You know, we really sat there and we've really got into it. And that's important. It's so important. Don't feel pressured at all. Just sit there, open the beds, you know. These two things really that basically for buying a motorhome or a caravan, one is budget and the second is layouts. Layouts, layouts is the most important thing and you will not get it right the first time. So no. don't blow the budget. No matter how many you look at, your first van will never be the the, oh, the main van. <laughs> You'll understand from your first van what works and what doesn't work. And we did. I mean, our layout on the Luna worked for us, I think worked really well. It was a four-berth caravan. It worked really well for us. Um, the thing we didn't like was having to make the beds up every night. Um, you know, and it's the mentality of, Oh, I'm tired now, let's go to bed. Or, oh, I'm tired now, let's start making the beds up. Um, and that was it for us. Once we got rid of Tom, and it was just three of us in the caravan, that was the time that we could um, swap it around um, and, uh, you know, go for a fixed bed. My first blog out today, Mark Hill, I did thank three people I've influenced me most. Dan Trudgeon, Andrew Ditton, and Bob and Jenny. That's four people. Bob and Jenny and Shaw. I still need to tweak on you, buddy. Massive shout out. There yes, is enough. three very, very good channels there. The Trudgeons, Andrew Ditton, and Bob and Jenny and Shaw. Really good channels. Can I just tell you a funny story about Mark? I was at the NEC. Oh, when was this? Last October? Last October. I was at the NEC show and I was sat down. I was having a meeting with, uh, with a PR agency. And we were sat there, we were having a chat in Starbucks, and then all of a sudden, a bottle of gin just landed on my table. And uh, this chap just said, cheers for everything you do. Thanks, that. Bye now. And, and walked off. And that was Mark. <laughs> Lovely chap. Uh, wow. So, I, yeah. I, I had to walk back through the rest of the show with this bottle of gin. I got a lot of attention. But the, the, the thing is with YouTube now, though, Dan, it, it is a go-to place, not just motorhomes and caravans. If you need to know any information or how to set something up or how to fix something up or how to do something, it's it's the go-to place, mate, isn't it? I learned how to wallpaper from YouTube. I, I learned how, to fix, I learned how to fix my washing machine, change the pipe. <laughs> and I, I only I also, had one screw left. I also learned how to clean my EGR valve on my BMW. And where the drain down uh, tap is for uh, changing the oil. Oh, that's fantastic! It's really good. Yeah, but it's it's evolved. It's evolved from forums that are written, obviously written down now, isn't it? And it's so much better to be able to watch and and copy. I think it appeals to people's learning nature. You know, some people can learn from the written word. Some pitch people can learn from like the manuals, like the Haynes manual, which was the best thing in there ever. But now. Well, you can physically see somebody undoing a bolt or changing this and then saying, oh, careful of this because you'll snap that lug if you pull that out too quick. And that, for me, is is worth its weight in gold. I'm seeing a few comments coming up about you doing your live. I'd love to see three or four people um, talking for four hours. I've got an idea. Wouldn't it be great if you started a live and just got totally, totally drunk? The, See the with the last man the, standing. We could just call it the lock-in, couldn't we? You know, it just this is, what? This is hard going, by the way. This is quite strong. And you only stop your live when there's nobody watching. Or well, it would, you it can't would stay going. awake. It would just keep going, wouldn't it? Because we'd all be passed out on the floor somewhere, wouldn't we? Socially, <laughs> socially distant, but passed out. The, the only problem is I found out, I think it was on the second show we did, I was, I was drinking whiskey next to me. And the second half, people were asking questions. I couldn't think of what people were asking me. I didn't. And the answer was up there, but it weren't coming out. So like, what's dangerous. this motor? I've no idea. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's dangerous. It's very dangerous. How's lockdown been for you, Dan? Interesting. Um, it's been it's been interesting. I've picked up a lot of work. I've been working quite hard. Uh, we've picked up a lot of things to do. Uh, because we've been in lockdown and people haven't been able to create content, we've been doing an awful lot. It's been hard emotionally because Angela has been, uh, you know, she's furloughed and she's home and she's not really allowed to go back to work. She's, you know, one of these people who has to stay home. That's been quite hard. Um, and homeschooling for Chloe has also been quite, quite emotional. 
Um, it's been a, it's been a challenge, but we are three people who ultimately get on well, and we've just got on one okay. It's a case of you got two, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it, I will miss it actually, as we being here together, because I do love my family a lot. You know, we get on so well. Uh, I think I will miss it. We've, we've, we've said before, there's no, but we'll never get this chance again. No. For such long term quality family time. Exactly, exactly. Uh, I think we've had one argument. We had one stupid argument about the loft, uh, which was just a completely ridiculous thing to be arguing about. And then we realised that we were just a little bit, you know. Yeah. Our oh, famous last words from Dan I don't drink at home. No, I don't, Mark. You've never seen me with a drink in my hand at home. <laughs> What do you think the future is with campsites, um, Dan? I don't know. Um, it's going to be an extremely new normal. It's going to be um, interesting. I think my biggest concern is nothing to do with the campsites. I think my biggest concern is the surrounding areas of campsites. Yeah. Um, I got very animated and quite upset a couple of weeks ago when um, I saw all those people down in Durdle Door, all compacted together. Uh, and I thought, you, you know, because my frustration was we've sacrificed so much here in our house in order to do the right thing. And there's people on the beach, literally touching shoulders. Uh, and I, it, I got really animated and it just, it just flicked with me. I thought, well, why am I doing this? If you're just going to go end up in a tourist hotspot anyway. And, and that's my fear that we're going to be opening campsites in tourist hotspots like Cornwall, Devon, you know, the whole southwest here. There's one hospital in uh, Cornwall, in Truro. There's lots of little cottage hospitals all dotted around, I know, but there's one big one in Truro. And I fear that if we all go down there, we're all socialising together in confined spaces, putting extra weight and extra pressure on, uh, you know, a health service, which is just about coping. My fear is, is that it's, it, it could be bad for us. And that's got nothing to do with the campsites. It's got nothing to do with the clubs or the associations or the organisations who have really tried hard to accommodate us. Let's, be, perf that it's, it's Let's the be perfectly honest, Dan. Right, the shops are opening tomorrow, right? Would you go to the shops? No. Because I wouldn't. No. No. Last place I, really I want to go for the next week is the shops. Well, really for the next to. month or two. Oh, yeah. No. You Would know, you want I, to I, go I, to I, the I, pub? No. No? No, I don't want... <laughs> I mean, I say I don't want to go to the shops. I really want to go to the shops. You know, I'm a big I'm a big comic book fan. I want to go to the comic shop because there's nothing I love more doing than going to the comic shop, browsing through the latest releases, seeing what's available, seeing what's there, just looking through. You know, that's my thing. That is my down tools, Dan, go do your thing. I love going to the comic shop. And he's open tomorrow. And I really want to go and see the guys there because I've missed them. I've missed that, you know, whole thing. I don't want to go to that. No. And I'm going to expand it further when it comes to the shows, like the NEC, I don't want to go to the show. I, I as a punter, do not want to go to somewhere which is going to be dragging 100,000 people through the doors in a five-day period from all over the world. I do not want to be going to a show that that, um, that, that, that takes place in. I, I just can't see it. And I can't see how the show can go ahead anyway, because... How could we socially distance ourselves from another person looking around inside a caravan? Even at one meter, it just won't work. I don't want to Dan, do anything remotely at all like that this year. No. I really don't. I really don't. And like I said, I, I totally agree with you about when you see on the beaches and everything else. I'm saying. It's... I don't want to sound pessimistic and, you know, down the dumps. Yeah, and I, I even say, Dan, if I took my kids, the family, we'll jump to the car tomorrow. We went down to the beach. If I saw the amount of people on that beach, I would not get out of my car. I'd drive back home again. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I yeah. wouldn't. I mean, I can go in my car. And I can go and drive to my friend's house, you know, and, and I really, there's, there's two people I dearly, dearly want to go and see, you know, and I really, really want to go and give them a damn good big hug. They know who they are. And I really want to go and see them because they're on my mind all the time. But I'm just not going to. We do it just by FaceTime. 
Sorry, Dad, just a quickie. Uh, we, anybody who doesn't know, 40 quid's worth of collapsed products up for a prize. The, you've got your last chance now to get them in on the comments. Dan's going to pick it. If you could collapse anything, what would it be? So you've got a quick five minutes now to get your answer in. And then Dan's took note of all the ones that have come in and he's going to pick the winner. Um, and then we can get them products out. If you could collapse anything, what would it be? Tracy said, I'd collapse my fella. He's recently retired and we're meant to be going to France, but he's driving me mental. <laughs> that sounds like a perfect marriage, that does, doesn't it? Uh, do you want to just bring Liam for a second, uh, Shane? I can do. Yeah. Morning. Dan, <laughs> anything you want to ask a uh, caravan technician? Uh, Lee, Hi. How you done? Um, well, you put me on the spot. I don't know what to ask him. Uh, Lee, uh, here's a very good one. Uh, what's your favourite cheese? Don't like cheese. Oh, I like the stinky ones. What? Ugh. I think we've done here. Bye. Yeah, I'm I with like you on that, Dad. You don't like I cheese? I can't stand cheese. Hate the stuff. You know, you, that's, you're going to lose business now because of that. You know that, don't you? I, I don't mind. Because whenever I'll you go to any of these big shows, there is there's always a store selling cheese and there's a store selling <laughs> yeah. sausage. Um, yeah. I, I don't mind. I, I was going to say I don't mind sausage, <laughs> Ember. <laughs> <laughs> Rephrase that. I don't mind. Oh, no, I'm not going to say I don't mind eating sausage either because that doesn't sound very good either. Par partial to the Spanish sausage, sir. <laughs> just, 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 sorry, Dan. There's something here I've written down. I picked up on a, when I was watching some of the videos. You did something like a trudge fest, didn't you? Yeah, we did. Uh, back in back in 2018, we did a, a trudge fest. Uh, a ridiculous name, um, but it came about because we were always asked, and we still are asked, in fact, uh, where are you going on holiday? What campsite are you going to? We'd love to come out and join you. And I just said, "Well, let's let's hire a let's hire a, a campsite, and let's go." There's uh, there's John Caravan Sharks TF19, and uh, yes, we uh, we went and had a, 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 a basically four days away with what felt like fifty friends, fifty families who were all friends. We were all together. I knew none of them. They all knew me, and it was wonderful and because we had the whole campsite all the kids just got together they were all playing it was lovely yeah that's all i have to say on the matter were you going to do it again this year then we did another one in last year <clears throat> yeah um but that was um that was quite strained and that was quite difficult uh because the original place we wanted to go to at the 11th hour pulled out mm. um the club came in and did um, the, 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 the Caravan Motor Home Club came in and they really helped us, especially a couple of um, people, uh, wardens, I should say, down in Longley, Gail and Mark. They really pulled the fingers out. And literally, everybody really rallied around to make it as good as it could be. But it just didn't feel the same and it wasn't the same. And because we were on a, a site with other people, we were distributed all over the place and it just didn't work. Um, and we all came away from that quite deflated, quite upset. You know, we had a bit of a bust up. The people who were organising it, we came away from that quite upset. And we said, balls to it, we won't do it again. Um, so we thought, at best, we'll have a, a year off. And thank goodness we did. Um, we've always gone down the plan of doing another Time that well done, didn't you? <laughs> God, yeah. I'll tell you what. Um, and we're going to go, and we've always thought that if we're going to do it again, we're going to different direction we're going to have it as a rally not as a, a gathering um or we'll just turn and say we're going to be at this campsite between these dates book up and come and come and join us right. which is what we were going to be doing this year but all of those things have now been cancelled hmm. what's the future for the children's youtube channel matey i haven't got a ruddy clue i'm just going to drink more and film more <laughs> and that's it how much content yeah. have you got left how many what sorry how much content have you got left? Lots. I've got three okay, months good. worth. I've got three months worth laid out on my uh, Trello board right here, um, and I've got I've got films like for the next six weeks. I've got films involving how to use the toilet, uh, how to you know the whole life cycle of the toilet, literally from uh, filling it up, emptying it, using it, maintaining it, repairing it. You know all of those things in one 
conducive video. Uh, I've got another video on what to do when you're on site. So you've just bought a caravan, you've set yourself up. Now what do you do whilst you're away? Um, and and I've got other videos talking about uh, FAQs to do with batteries. What's the difference between a car battery and a leisure battery? Um, I've got lots of things like that lined up and ready to go. Yeah, I, I, I've noticed on, you've changed a bit of a direction going towards to the beginning now, haven't you? Yeah, we, we, we've, we there are, you know, you have to keep it fresh, but you also have to be dictated by what your customers want. And in this lockdown period, I've been quite meticulous looking at our analytics and I've just been seeing what has been consumed more. And we are just about to go into the perfect storm of newbies picking up caravans. Yeah. The, the secondhand stock right now is fantastic brought about because of the PCP finance agreements. People are coming out of those three-year terms now. There's some fantastic secondhand stock. So people have been able to jump in, spend a little bit of money, get a 10, 12 grand vehicle, which is absolutely superb, go away for the first time without a clue on what they're doing. And it's all brought about a perfect storm over a brand new um, set of customers, set of people taking up you know, the, the staycation, as it's now known as, but just going out touring. And the great thing is a lot of these are here to stay now as well, aren't they? I know there will some drop, some will drop off in a year's time when if, if, if and when everything clears up, but there's going to be so many more yeah. Uh, cost, yeah. caravanners, motorhomers out there, which is brilliant. The next thing, I don't think it yeah. will drop off that much. I, I like, don't. Like, I said, not for a long like time. I said last week, you know, I, I've noticed over the last few years, people new coming into caravanning and they've bought an older caravan um, just to see what they think of it and then gone out and, and had a new van on finance or whatever. And, you know, the, the thousands of pounds they'd be spending to go abroad every year is getting them several holidays throughout the year in the caravan. I mean, that's the I, thing that people aren't thinking about is once you, we've got this wave all done, you're then going to get another wave of people changing to get the right layout. I, yeah. did, a, I did a fantastic, um, uh, I will say it's fantastic because I thought it was really good. <laughs> I did a, a, a blog post on a website which talked about, you know, is caravanning actually cheaper than going away for a, ho for a holiday? Um, and I compared, I did a five-year breakdown over the, the period of a 15 grand loan based upon um, five trips going to Costa del Sol for seven nights, a no seven nights a year. And it worked out that at the end of the period, if you went away to Spain for one week, that would cost a family of four, three and a half grand or you paid off three and a half grand for your 15K loan, at the end of it, you've still got a resellable asset. Yeah. Now, I think mm. at the moment, there's, there's a, there's, the media has turned onto the whole thing of being able to buy a caravan and motorhome. When you see reports like Jeremy Clarkson has now bought a caravan because he gets it, uh, and he self-confesses, he likes it, he gets it, he understands it now. It only took a pandemic for him to understand it. Um, so when you see nuggets like that, the next big thing we, the, the industry needs to do is tell people, look, at the end of the summer, it doesn't just stop. You can keep going right throughout the winter and you can, down, you can enjoy a, a fantastic uh, holiday away in the depths of winter. That's what's going to happen this year, I think, Dan. And that is the industry has to be really on it and tell people, don't put a breathable cover over your pride and joy. No. Keep bloody using it. That's why I the first thing I said was use it all year round. Exactly. I, yeah. Dad, buy some, we buy some fridge vents. Sorry, and, you know, buy some fridge vents and go and use your outfit. Yeah. Dan, we need a we need a winner for this uh, prize. Right. <laughs> um, here we go. Um, notable uh, mentions: Daverman uh, sixty eight. Uh, he said his ego. Damien Hollibury said, Dan's little man. Not really sure what he meant by that. Uh, <laughs> Linda said, my belly. Uh, towing the turn. Uh, Paul Joy said, uh, collapse the lockdown, which I must agree. But I will pick a winner. And I will say the winner is towing the tin because I have a lot of empathy with this comment because I too agree with it. Um, the one thing you could collapse would be the amount of chocolate and beer that is consumed by me. And I must agree. My food bill has gone through the roof. I've now got oh, a lot. Don't on even the get me on that. Don't get me started on that. So, towing the tin. You've towing the, the tin. 
you've won the prize if you can DM me through Twitter or Instagram. If you DM me through Twitter, just follow me and I'll follow you back. Shane? Yep. Um, Caravans in Campus at SY45PR. Uh, 5RP. <laughs> Instagram <laughs> at the Motor Home Man. Uh, Tam, that's, do you know what? It's bloody flown. It has, hasn't it? I mean, you I'm can... drunk. I don't care. So, um, please, please, please subscribe to this man's channel, The Trojans. You'll find some great videos on there as well. Um, hopefully, maybe in the future we can get uh, Dan back on and talk about cheese. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. I think we should do a cheese report with Lee at the NEC. <laughs> yeah. And wine yeah. and gin. And sausage. We'll introduce him to the sausage, sausage man. Sausage. The sausage man's been going for years as well, hasn't it? It's, it's good, actually. I always, say. Yeah, yeah. I always end up spending 30 quid with him. <laughs> he, he knows me by name. He says, same again, sir? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks, everybody, for watching. It's been a great night. We've had some great guests on with Collapse, and Dan has been an absolute star. So hopefully we'll see you all next week. And everybody stay safe and see you soon. Brilliant. Thanks, guys. I'm going to go and drink the gin. Take care. Thanks, all. Goodbye. <laughs>